In the previous video, I described how to use a secure shell and use the command rsync to transfer files and folders from two computers that are connected to the internet. As far as these computers have IP addresses, whatever they are located in the world, you can connect and transfer one folder or several folders from one to another one. If you haven't seen the video, please click in the link in the description to the part one of this video. Otherwise, the description that I'm saying here could be confusing. So in a nutshell, what we did was writing a code in uh, Sigmin. It's called rsync with the argument. And this is our original source file. And this is the location of our destination computer which is this, the first part is the name, at sign, IP address of the second computer that we want to put the data in, the destination. And this is being written with in, inside the SIG drive slash C, my destination folder. And this was basically the summary of what we did in the last session. So in this session, we are going to make this process automated. There are different ways for making this process automated. One of them is using the Windows scheduler, or if you're using Mac, you can use the automator. So the other way to do this automation is, is a command in Linux or Sigwin, it's called crone. The problem with the rsync is that it will overwrite your destination folder with whatever it sees from the original folder. So if you have removed or changed some of your files from the destination folder that you want to put the data in, it will create a fresh copy of your data. So you may lose your older data if they are different than the new data. So my colleague at Columbia University, Dr. Dan Paley, uh, wrote several program codes that uh, in a smart and organized way create history folders and it does an incremental backup of your data. So what it does is basically, it makes a list all the files in that folder. And then uh, based on the differences of the past and the, the current, it creates a history folder into the backup uh, server. So you will have a fresh copy of your data plus a history folder from the past data. So still it uses the rsync, but it's in, in a more organized and smarter way. You can download the original backup codes that he wrote in his personal GitHub website. Uh, and uh, I will explain how to use these and I'll go through the, the details of that. So let's start with a simple example using rsync and use Windows Scheduler and we write only one code of rsync to copy one folder from one to another. First, open your task scheduler, then click on create basic task, not the task, just the basic task. The name of your task, my weekly backup, I click weekly. I'm happy with this. Uh, every Sunday starts from today. Next, start the program. We want to start the, the segment program on our coding. So this part on the action is a tricky part. So the program that we want to run is the Sigwin. So whatever you installed your Sigwin, if it's Sigwin 64 or just Sigwin, then bin and then backslash bash dot executable. And on the argument, you need to select the path where your code is. So you also include these two arguments, uh, C and L, this is not I, L. And just be careful, this one is slash. So when you are entering this, not backslash. It's, if you enter backslash, Windows doesn't like it. Uh, so here I copied and pasted it and we click next. I already have my uh, backup already set up and 
you can see the trigger. I just did it in one time, doesn't matter here. Action, this is what is going to be running. And I put it as a test and it's going to run and it works perfectly. So the code that I'm using is actually a very simple code. rsync with the arguments and the original files and the destination. So my name, my IP address and the destination folder. And this is very simple. It just makes a fresh copy every time I run this program or if I do it with, with the Windows task scheduler, it does it and removes my older folders. And we may not need to do this because we can do it in a better way and make history folders every time we are doing a backup. My colleague, Dr. Dan Paley wrote a nice set of code and you can use the, these codes. It's available on his GitHub webpage and uh, I will put the link in the description to download. After downloading the zip folder and opening it up, you will see that it contains several SH source files. And the one that we are going to work with uh, are the backup and backup all. Uh, these are doing extra function like checking storage, uh, purging or deleting some of the folders and dividing to the previous setup. So these are, we are not going to work with these for now. We are just going to concentrate on backup and backup all. So let's start with a backup file. This is a backup file. And as you can see, it contains uh, around 100 uh, lines of code. Uh, we don't get deeper into what exactly each line is doing, but as a general, as I mentioned before, this is only doing an incremental backup. It means that it look at your destination and it looks at your uh, original files or folders and see if there's any change it put those changed file and folder into the history folder and create a fresh folder, just like a mirror of your original backup. So basically you only need to change one line of this code, which is the destination folder of your backup server. So you download this on your backup server and wherever you want to do the backup and save these codes, just correct this line of code or basically a path for that folder. This is true for the other file. So if we go back, this is backup all. And what you're going to change is the same thing. So the execution path is the folder on your server that uh, you downloaded this uh, code and you want to do saving all your data in that backup folder. So change these and as well as this one. And this is the final uh, folder that all your data will be saved in this folder. So you basically need to change these three lines. The other nice thing about this program or code is that it also does a nice thing of sending email of the progress of what happened if the, the backup went well or there was some sort of a problem during the uh, backup. So it automatically sends an email at the end of the backup to say that everything went well and this is optional. So if you go to the same folder, you will see the email list and you can change the um, list of the emails that you want to receive. So uh, normally these emails, because these are sent automatically, they go to the junk, but normally uh, Gmail uh, can recognize them and you can just say it as it's not a spam, uh, but this is optional. So you don't have to do this part. The other important file in this uh, set of codes is the rsync hosts. So hosts are those PCs, those computers that you want to get their data and put that data in your uh, server computer. So let's go back into what this is. So go here, rsync hosts. So when you open it, so for example, I just open it in notepad. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is the name of your tool or just your PC. 
And this is the name of your PC, which is the name of the Windows that each computer has a name. This is the IP address of your computer, and this is the port number. So we talked about this in the first video, and this is the folder of your original uh, data that you want to make a backup from it that belongs to this computer. And finally, this is a name that in your server, it will create a folder name with this name so it can be more descriptive of what uh, the data is going to. So you will have a big folder of backup and underneath this, uh, there are uh, subfolders with this name and another name like arbitrary or something like that. Just make sure if you're running Windows, uh, you need to install SigWin on all those hosts or PCs that you want to get a backup from. And SigWin recognizes the folders by typing SIG drive at the beginning of the path. So SIG drive slash C and then so on. So after indicating the correct path for each computer and the correct IP address and so on, just what you need to run is running the backup all every day or every week. And this is the file that we tell the Windows task scheduler to run it, for example, at 12 a.m., like in the morning. And if you have lots of data, it may take hours, depending on your computer speed. But this is basically your Windows is running this file, and it will go smoothly. Just to quickly show you how things look like in our server. So I am connected to our server, which uh, does the backing and has a huge uh, hard drive. So this is the original setup that I talked about. And these are the same uh, codes that we changed them based on destination and uh, where these codes are. So all the data is going to go to the backup destination. This is the major folder that contains all the instrument that we have. And this possibly is around uh, 10 terabyte of data. And each one of these, for example, if I go to the first computer and you will see that you will end up with three folders, backup, history, and log. So backup is the mirror of what is on the AFM computer. History, if there is any change in the past, it will create, so we are doing this daily. So you will see every day is creating a different folder because uh, every day is changing something. Uh, students are making new data. And the log, which uh, provides you more information, what has been changed, why it did uh, uh, create a history folder. And this is the backup folder that contains all the data inside the AFM computer. Since our server is running on Linux, uh, we can use Windows Task Scheduler. So instead, we're using cron command, which is uh, relatively simple to use. And uh, there are so many videos online you can watch how to set up cron. This is the case if you want to run this command, which does similar thing to the task scheduler. If you're running it with SIGWIN in Windows, or you want to run it in uh, Mac or uh, Linux. So I put a link below how to work with cron. The last thing I would like to talk about is securing your computer from a data hack. So SSH is like adding a new door to your house, your computer. Uh, so you're opening a port to the outside. So you need to make sure there is a strong lock. So your computer has a strong password, or you made sure that there is an authentication uh, in the SSH. So there are methods to make sure that only computers that they have a secure public and private uh, key on the, between the server and between the host can connect to the server or to your computer. So in this case, you need to make sure no other computer even attempt to try to ping your computer, your, your PC. 
So to close those connections, open your Sigmin, go to your ETC folder. And in this folder, you have a file. It's called, I'm going to open it and change it. It's called SSHD configuration file. So as you can see here, there is a, a line that it will block any attempt to connect to your computer. So first, password authentication makes it no and remove the hash and also permit empty password, no. So also the last line, challenge response authentication, no. So you're preventing any computer to just automatically with a brute force to just try to find your password and to flood your computer. It is highly recommended to do this on all your computers, including your hosts and the server, uh, to make sure that they see each other with the private and uh, private keys, but uh, no other computer are uh, being allowed to just try to get into your SSH connection. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any question or find any part of this tutorial confusing. Hopefully everything goes well with your backing up between your server and your computers.